Hello, everyone. I'm John Nance, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at Dealbox. Welcome to today's edition of Dealbox Daily. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the future of asset allocation and portfolio construction when it comes to the investable universe. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, I spent the early days of my career as a derivatives trader, a portfolio manager, and an operations director at various broker dealers, RIAs, and wealth management firms for about eight years. During that time, I got to see all of the allocation strategies, the financial planning tools, and the underlying assumptions that are used to construct today's investment portfolios. All the while this is going on, I'm sitting and I'm observing these portfolios in the way that these managers are thinking that their investors are diversified via these multi-strategy fixed income sleeves, the way that they think about dissecting the equity components of those portfolios broken down into all sorts of factors as they're referred to in the industry. And at the end of the day, I kind of felt like there was this issue that the asset management community had decided that they deciphered the equation or the answer to the asset allocation question at hand today. But what I came to realize is that when everyone thinks that they're diversified in a similar way, no one really is. And so to that degree, I've become fundamentally convinced that the way that portfolios are constructed for today's investors is not the way that they need to be constructed for the future. And I'm going to speak to a couple of these macro frameworks as to why I believe that that's the case. First and foremost, let's start with the rise of passive investing or beta type products as they're referred to. In the asset management world today, fee compression in the way of trading and commissions and RIA type management fees or fee only advisory accounts are being conveyed and utilized by the investing public at large almost makes no sense anymore. The central banks and the monetary authorities of the world have effectively commoditized the return profiles in public securities markets today, namely equity and fixed income, but in other niche areas and and segments of asset categories as well. And so what do I really mean when I say that? What I mean is that you can invest in the public markets today with your financial advisor or on your own through any of these brokerage platforms or new age fintech and, and wealth management systems. But at the end of the day, what you're going to get by constructing a portfolio inside those frameworks is beta or exposure to whatever it is the market returns. And because of this monetary policy intervention over the last 12 plus years, since the great financial crisis in 08, perpetrated by the central banks, executed and carried out by the central banks, they are now in a situation where they are effectively not directly, but effectively controlling the returns on these asset prices over time. When you come to consider that, it effectively means that when you invest in those public equities, those public fixed income strategies, those blended portfolios that you see in target date funds for retirement accounts, you're basically saying, I'm going to invest it, whatever the market returns, and that's it. That's all well and good if you're already a wealthy person who's looking to preserve capital or preserve your net worth as things like inflation grow. But what happens if you're somebody who's looking to create additional wealth? It will not be created by passive investments. It will not be created by beta-only products. And so what's more and more of a challenge today is how to generate alpha or create wealth above the standard returns of these public securities. It's our belief here at Dealbox that that answer lies in private placement investing. Moving further down the valuation sets into earlier stage companies with proven track records, sustainable growth, strong models, and also very importantly, attention to detail when it comes to things like corporate social responsibility and environmental sustainability. Too often investors forget that this phrase ESG you hear is for environmental, sustainable, and governance. We forget about the G part in ESG, and that's why I bring in that use of corporate social responsibility, how these companies, these managers think about their impact on society and not just their shareholder returns, but their stakeholder interests, anybody that their business impacts financially or otherwise. And so as managers, asset managers start to pay attention to this shifting landscape and they think about the way that governments are starting to build mandates 
for climate sustainability tracking in their supply chains, right? The ability to report on their overall climate footprints of their business, how they think about governance inside their companies. And the fact that the largest, most sophisticated investors today are starting to ask these questions about the companies that they invest in. Predominantly public for the most part today, but it's being asked more and more in the private environments as well. And so where I'm going with all of this, knowing this macro framework, is how do you start to knowing these things, condense and distill this into a micro framework to be able to implement and put into place for your investments today? And the answer lies in a solution like Dealbox or a similar manager or service provider that thinks about these things with a reference frame over the next 10, 20, or 30 years. We do this because successful investing isn't about finding the next cryptocurrency move that's going to go up 200% in a month. It's about identifying good businesses with good business models who are growing and investing in them for their intermediate to long term. The situation is such that humans are emotional. The very first phrase of the efficient market hypothesis states, assuming humans are rational investors. How many rational humans do you know? How often is it that emotion comes into play in decision-making? That is amplified to the nth degree when money comes into play, people's actual net worth, their financial well-being, their financial independence. And so that type of emotion is something that we need to pay careful attention to. And we also need to be thinking that our idea of long-term today is not what long-term investing is really about. So where I'm going with all of this is, I believe, and this is shared here at the committee at Dealbox, is that the vast majority of investors today, their portfolios are extremely misallocated. They're likely overweight equities. They're likely overweight fixed income. They are most certainly underweight alternative investments. And they are absolutely assuredly underweight venture capital, private equity, and high conviction early stage companies, which is where alpha generation comes from. Knowing that, we then layer in our macro framework around ESG, corporate social responsibility, blockchain-based technology, and all of these things to create a lens, a mandate, a thesis in which we look out into the environments today, the investable universe and say, which companies check all of these boxes and how can we provide asset managers and individual investors exposure to those businesses so that they can better articulate their value proposition to their clients as asset managers. They can better enhance their returns as asset managers or individual investors all the while feeling good about the businesses that they're investing in because they're doing something good for the world <clears throat> in accordance with how the world will likely look and think from a social standpoint, from a sociology standpoint, 10, 20 years into the future. We believe this is the future of investing and it is a trend that is not going away. As time goes on, you'll likely hear in the news more mandates, more requirements coming out about these climate change initiatives, about the ability for public companies to disclose this information to their investors. You'll see things like large asset managers in the pension endowment world or the retirement plan community start to rethink how they allocate to these businesses based on this information that they're now providing. And all of a sudden, there's likely to be a large shift in the way that capital is directed from the traditional businesses of the past, the mega caps of the past, into these more forward-thinking companies that are not only solving problems and addressing a market for the future, but are doing so inside of the exact frameworks that the public at large and now starting to be the governments at large want to see in terms of how these companies operate and what it is their impact is on the planet from the entire ESG landscape, not just sustainability, but again, back to the governance, back to the environment, back to that stakeholder, attention to stakeholder implications, not just shareholder implications. So all this is to say, kind of a brief primer around the way that Dealbox and its investment committee thinks about how to solve some of these problems that are in the allocation community today and the ways that we are trying to help communicate this story, again, both to asset managers and individual investors, 
to rely on businesses like Dealbox to come and hear our theses around how the investment universe is going to change, where those higher returns are going to come from, how investing in the right businesses can be systemized into a repeatable process to be able to continue to invest in these things and further strengthen their portfolios. So if anyone has any questions or follow-up that they would like to conduct with respect to this conversation today, the folks at Dealbox are always here standing by at our investor relations team to be able to talk to anyone about our theories on these things. We hope you found it a little bit uh, informative with respect to what these theses are that we have. And hopefully some of these things struck home to you and, and resonated in terms of how you think about the social impact and the environmental impact and the returns impact that your investment selection as an individual or an asset manager can really start to move the needle, not just in returns, but in this global movement towards a more sustainable future for humanity. And the bottom line in all of it is that this trend is not going away. This is likely the largest mega macro trend that will continue to persist for the vast foreseeable future, especially as the younger generations, the Gen Zs and below them, start to undergo this mass transition of wealth that's occurring from the older generations to the younger and start to demand these types of things. And they'll be voting, rest assured, with their money, not just their social media posts. And once that change starts to happen, if you're on the wrong allocation side, you will miss those returns and you will be likely, maybe not assuredly, but likely criticized for not paying attention to these things sooner and putting yourself in position to capitalize on them, but also do so responsibly. So with that said, I'd like to thank you guys all for joining us again for another episode of Dealbox Daily. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. 